Hello, and in this video I'm going to be converting our top network into a digital asset. This can be then used as a tool inside of Houdini or imported into Unreal and used with Houdini Engine. Now that I'm happy with the top's network and that I'm happy it's working as it should, I'm going to pack it up as a digital asset. And by doing this, it means that users can use this top network without having to dive inside and come to each one of these HDA processors. Instead, they'll be able to just select the digital asset and have all those parameters available to them. I'm also going to leave these nodes as editable so that I can cook each of these nodes individually if I want to. So come back up to the object level. We'll convert this geometry node into our digital asset. So let's name this. And I'm going to call it PDG Height Field Generator. And right click, digital asset, create new. And just prefix this with PE for Pegasus. Uncheck author, menu entries Pegasus. And let's just capitalize PTG and add the PE prefix. And set the uh, library path to our Pegasus demo package. Dollar Pegasus demo. There we go, and that's going to save into our Pegasus package directory with all of our other digital assets. And you might notice it's prefixing this digital asset with object instead of SOP. And that's because I'm prefixing it with the category type, and this is at the object level rather than the service level. These digital assets are at the service level, they get prefixed with SOP. But our PDG, which is at the object level, we get will get prefixed with object. So now let's hit create. First thing we'll do is add our Pegasus logo. So let's add that icon and hit apply. And now we have our tops network as a digital asset. Can't you see we've already got some parameters on here? Let's come over to the parameters tab. Let's just select all of those parameters and make them invisible. And hit apply. There we go. So now they're no longer visible. So let's go inside and look for some parameters to expose. First of all, on our load landscape, let's add a folder and call this 01 load landscape. And let's drag and drop this directory into our load landscape folder. I probably won't need to modify this, but I just want to have it available just in case I need to. Now let's add some parameters from our extract cliffs. Next, I'm going to add the delete small cliffs threshold parameter from our extract cliffs digital asset. Let's add a folder for this one as well. Let's just make this a simple folder and name this 02 Extract Cliffs. And drag and drop that threshold. And call this Delete Small Cliffs Threshold. And hit apply. Next, our cliff generator. So again, let's add another folder for this step as well. This one's going to be called 04 cliff generator. Make it a simple folder as well. And now let's drag and drop our parameters. So this has a few more parameters to add. So I'm going to add some subfolders to keep this organized. So we've got geo input. And our subdivision. Next folder is displacement textures. And we can add both of those. 
followed by displacement. And finally, let's add that geometry output folder as well. And now let's add these parameters. So edge mask into displacement, followed by texture scale, displacement on amount, and axis blend. And then into the geometry output folder, the percentage to keep for the poly reduce. And then finally, the cliff tile. So let's add a folder. And this folder is called 05 cliff tile. So we'll add this grid size. I'm also going to add a parameter so I can change the subfolder increments. Currently it's set to 25. But I want to be able to change that if I need to. So let's add a integer parameter to our cliff tile and call this subfold increments. Let's set the range between 25 and say 200. Now I'm going to hit apply and Come back up to the object level. You know, have a quick look at our digital asset. And we can see how it's got some folders that I missed that need to be turned to simple folders. So let's do that now. Geometry output as well. That needs to be a simple folder. And displacement textures. I want to change some of these default values. So delete spore cliffs threshold. Let's set that to. 1000 rather than 10,000. I can see the name is currently getting clipped, which I don't like. I want it to be make sure it's clearly visible. So let's add a subfolder to the extract cliffs. Call this delete small cliffs. And then I'm going to put that threshold parameter inside that folder, make the folder a simple folder. And then I'm just going to name this parameter threshold. There we go, that's clearer. And I can see the threshold is referring to the delete small cliffs. Change that threshold from 10,000 to 100. And come over to the parameter in our type properties window. Right click and copy defaults from node. I'm also going to do the same for our subfolder increments. I'm going to change that to 50. On our subfolder increments in the type properties window. Right click, copy defaults from node. And also set the default subdivisions to two and set that as default. On the subfolder increments, let's right click, copy parameter, come inside our tops net, down to the cliff tile. Let's make this bigger so it's clear to see and highlight this value of 25 and paste relative reference. And do the same again here for this 25 that we're multiplying by. Paste relative reference. And hit apply. If I just middle mouse click on the external file path, that reference showing up when it shouldn't do. And that's because when I pasted as reference, it came with backticks. And I don't need them because I've already encased my expression in backticks. So let's just delete those around those references. So now I just have them around our full expression for our subfolder. And I'll just make this nice and big so it's all fully readable. There you go, that should work. What I'm going to do is just to ensure that it is working. Is come down to our cliff tile split, right click on it and click generate node. Then select a work item and middle mouse click on our external file path. And you can see, if I click on different work items, you can actually see for the first work item, it looks like it's working. It's going to a subfolder called zero. If I click on the second work item, it's putting that into a folder called 50. 
which you shouldn't do. It should also be involved at uh, zero. If I click all the way through, you can see these numbers aren't correct. If I middle mouse click to return it back to, so we can see our expression, you can see here it says CHS, CH for channel, and then S for string, we, which means that it's returning our subfolder increment integer as a string, which we don't want. So let's just delete that S for both of the references to that channel. So CH, so now it just says CH and then the path to that parameter. And now if we try that again, a middle mouse click, so we can see the results of our expression and click on our work items. We can see now see they're updating as expected. Let's save this digital asset to save those changes. Now this is looking good, but I actually want to expose a few more parameters. So let's come into our HDA geometry node and come back to our PE cliff split and come inside this, come down to the end. We have our attribute create, and this is where we are adding some Unreal attributes including a attribute for our Unreal Bake folder, where we want to bake our geometry to, as well as the Unreal Material attribute. And I want to expose these, so if I want to change where our geometry is being baked to, or our material that we're using, I can, update, I can update these. So let's open the top properties window for our HDA, and add in those um, parameters. I'm going to subfolder, and call this Unreal Attributes. I'll make this a simple folder and just drag and drop these in. First of all, I just want the uh, Unreal Nanite enabled. And I only want this first field. So I'm just gonna highlight this one value and drag and drop that into the Unreal Attributes. And now you can see I have that as a float. I'm gonna change it to a toggle. And change this and call this nanites enabled. Second one is the bake folder, and we'll call this bake folder. And finally, the string for our Unreal material, and call this material. And hit apply. Let's take a look at our digital asset. So there we go, now we have those prompts exposed. We can hit accept. Come back to our tops network. Select our cliff tile HDA processor. Hit the button that says update HDA parameters. And now on the HDA parameters tab, we have those Unreal attributes available. And we can now expose those on our PDG HDA. So open in the type properties, come down to the cliff tile folder. And I'm going to add a folder here called Unreal Attributes. And then drag and drop those parameters into the folder. And hit apply. Come back up to the object level and select our PDG digital asset. And we can see we now have that Unreal attributes available on our Tops network as well. Let's set this to a simple folder as well as our load landscape. And hit apply. So now we have a comprehensive list of parameters that we can um, amend if we want to. The next thing we need to add is a way of running our um, Tops network from this digital asset. So if I double click and come inside, to our top net and select that. You can see we've got some cook controls. But I want to add these to our digital asset. So let's add another folder. Let's put this at the top below the root and call this cook controls. I'm gonna make this one collapsible and then just drag and drop these buttons into that folder.
select the first button, which is generate static work items, and then just and check for each of them horizontally join to next parameter. So this way they'll all be aligned in a row. Double click the top net to come inside and find the local scheduler. And now I'm going to add this working directory as well. So now I'll be able to set and change where our um, files from our TOPS network will be saved. Click apply and come back up to the object level. And now we can see those additional controls we've added to our digital asset. And I think that's all the parameters I'm going to expose. As I said before, when I was developing this workflow, I did a lot of my kind of tweaking and testing inside of Houdini and just exposed these variables in case I needed them. The last thing I need to add, if I come inside our top network, is an output node. So let's add output. I'm going to call this output node something specific. I'm going to call it he underscore out and this is a very specific name that houdini engine will recognize and this will become clear in a second when i import our digital asset into unreal come up to the object network right click our digital asset and click save node top and now all of those changes have been saved to disk along with our updated parameter interface in the next video i'll be importing this digital asset into unreal